Hey everybody. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to turn this simple little cardboard box into this sarcophagus slash tomb. This is a very simple project that I chose to start out my channel with. This is a cardboard box. It costs $1.99 at Hobby Lobby. I actually think I paid less than that because I rarely go into Michael's or Hobby Lobby without some sort of coupon. So this, you know, inexpensive, a dollar or less. What you're looking at here are some small plastic pieces that I printed on a 3D printer. I designed all of these items and then I printed them out on my 3D printer and these will be glued onto the box to add embellishment. Now in the next video, I'm going to go into much greater detail about how I made these. It's a much longer video and you can totally skip over that if you like because these kind of things could easily be cut out of cardboard and glued on and for something circular like that, if you want to give it actually some, some thickness, this one's more curved on the surface like a bubble, but you could stack smaller bits of cardboard and sort of give it a raised look. But, um, you know, totally up to you. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, uh, you'll probably want to add some embellishments to the sides just to give it something extra. Now, I've already made one here. Uh, I glued this on a larger base, and I'll show you this uh, at the end of the video. But you can see, I just cut out some simple cardboard shapes to glue on the side. The only thing 3D printed was this top, the lid. But you could easily create your own lid. It doesn't necessarily have to have a figure on it. You could cut a shield or a sword or some sort of flowery, um, flowery object and add some, some corner items to it. I just I have access to a 3D printer, so I decided to make it uh, kind of the traditional tomb with the, the carved figure on top. So what I need you to do if you want to duplicate this is go get yourself a small cardboard box this one right here, <clears throat> this one is, let's see, it's uh, almost two inches wide and almost, it's two and three quarters inches long. And with the lid on, it's an inch and a half tall. So you could go bigger, but I looked for different boxes because I knew what I wanted to make. And this one just sort of fit the bill. <clears throat> now, the other thing you're going to want to decide is, you can choose to have your tomb closed, and if you do that, you want to you want to make the lid the bottom. You'll glue this on and then hold the box upside down, so the bottom of the box becomes the top the top of the tomb. The other option is you can spin this around and glue the box into the lid so that the top is open, and now you have an open tomb. And I made one like that right here. This plastic piece uh, is actually glued onto the lid very strongly. And this just gives the, the impression of an open tomb. You could put treasure down in there or maybe a hidden skeleton. And again, I printed some 3D embellishments for the side here, but again, you could use cardboard to do any of this. So this is an example of an open tomb. And this one right here is the example of the closed tomb. And in this video, I'm going to make the closed tomb. Okay, the first thing I need to do to get this tomb going is I have decided I'm going to create the closed tomb. So what I want to do is glue the shell into the lid. And to do that, I'm going to use tacky glue. It takes a little while, a little longer to, to dry, but I'm going to show you why I'm using tacky glue in just a second. So I spread the glue around the inside here, push the lid on. Hopefully that will give it a good connection to the box. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some some tacky glue around the edge like this. Because what I want to do is I want to seal that gap. I want this thing to look like one solid piece of stone with the base. And now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to run it around and get the excess off like that. And I'm going to let this dry, and after it's dry, I'm going to black bomb it. 
Well, it decided to rain in Atlanta today, so I'm not going to go out and use the spray paint. Instead, I think I'm just going to do this by hand. So I'll put a little paint here. And I'll go ahead and tell you, one of the things I love about these cardboard items <clears throat> is how well they take paint. Now, I'm not worried about this sticker because this part is going to be glued over it. So, and I also don't need to paint the top, but you know, sometimes I do just because I'm a completist. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint, paint this box. The paint's dry and it's ready to be glued together. Now I could use E6000 or Goop, but I don't like those glues because they give off some really foul smelling fumes that are not good for your, for your lungs. So I'm just gonna use some super glue here. There it is. <clears throat> All the embellishments are added. The lid is put on. I'm just going to let the glue dry for probably another 20, 30 minutes. I know super glue dries fast, but I wanna make sure this stuff really does get a good bond. And then I'll tackle the texture painting. Okay, time to paint this thing. I'm going to go with a rainy day gray. I'm not really sure. Uh, I tested it right here. It looks dark enough for my purposes. I want it to kind of have a stone cement look to it. So let's see how this works. Now, I am going to, I'm going to paint it sort of heavy, but I'm not going to try to get into all the little recesses. I do want some dark showing through. So I'm just going to give it a light coat here. This will darken, I hope, because right now it's looking a little too light. I'll go ahead and tell you, painting is not my strong suit. I've been watching enough of these videos, I've picked up on some things. Like, I love DM Scotty's sponge technique, still working on it. And Black Magic Craft just had a great video recently on dry brushing, which I definitely enjoyed, and I'm going to be watching on it, or watching it some more. But if you're noticing me making any mistakes painting, yeah. I, I make no claim to be a great painter. I just do what I can. And uh, I, after it dries, if I feel like it needs another coat, I'll give it another coat. But not my strong point. So I think what I'm going to do now is probably go time lapse. And you can watch me finish this.
this is the completed tomb. It's got a gray overcoat on it. And again, I mentioned I'm not a I'm not a paint expert, but I just want to have some fun with this, try some things, learn, maybe make a few mistakes. So what I'm going to do is I've got a blue and a pale blue. I'm going to do some dry brushing on this and just see what happens. If I'm not happy with it, I'll repaint it. Uh, probably start back at black and keep keep trying to see what see what works. But I thought it might be fun to just um, you know try a little try a little dry brushing and see see what happens. That's it. One little tomb slash sarcophagus. Mine has got a light blue marble scheme going on it. I might go a little darker. Actually, what I think I may do is do a wash on it a little later and see what that does. But I like it, and I hope it's, uh, I hope it's a project that you might try on your own. It's not hard. Remember, I, I wanted to choose a very simple project for this first episode, and this was nothing more than a $1 cardboard box turned into a tomb. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, uh, use cardboard. You know, Just give it some elements, some 3D elements on it, and paint it up, and there you go. Now, one more thing before I go. This little wooden stand here, uh, These I, I've seen these sold individually. I bought it as a three-pack. Uh, it came out to about a dollar a piece. If you can find these, paint them up, same color scheme or a different color scheme, glue it on, and you've got your tomb on a you know a raised pedestal, which gives it a little more flair, I guess. But anyway, thank you for your time. I hope you like uh, I hope you like this project. I have many more projects coming. Uh, I have some very simple ones. I have some more complex ones. Uh, many of them again will use the 3D printer. Others of them will not. But please stay tuned. I'm going to be trying to release one or two new videos per week. Probably one, but uh, I'm finding that the editing and stuff is not taking as long as I wanted. So I've got a backlog of projects here that I want to share with you, and I will be doing that in some upcoming episodes. Thanks again. This is DM Jim, and I'll see you in the next episode.